I've just started the recording, so uh, it's an algebra week this week, but I've actually completed all of the recommended questions uh, in previous tutorials. So I do five tutorials per week and I've already completed them all. So what I thought I might do today is actually discuss some calculus questions. Um, so this might involve the pinching theorem uh, and limits and, and a few other things. So um, that's what I'm planning to do. The links are, yep. The questions are from the course packet. I will show you a, uh, a picture of those. And I'm just going to work through the, the recommended questions. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Chris Tisdell. I'm a professor here and uh, I've taught this course many, many times, uh, but now I'm just doing it as a tutor. Okay, so feel free to let me know what you're thinking in the chat. Uh, and I'll just show you what we're going to work on today. So this is from the course pack. And one of the recommended questions is two. So I'll put that in the chat. This page is 47. Thank you for asking, Ning Xiao. 47. Okay, so it's chapter 2, 2A. Okay, and there are some other questions. I think 3B is also on the list. So I'll, oh, 3B, let me get that right. So I'll start off with those and we'll just discuss them and and see how we go, okay? So the first question is 2a, use the pinching theorem to find the following limits. And this is a very standard kind of question. This is the kind of question you see in lectures, okay? So um, how do we use the pinching theorem here? But before we discuss that, can somebody say in the answer, uh, in the chat, what is the actual answer? What is the value of this limit? The limit as x approaches infinity of sine x on x. Who can actually tell me what the answer is without computing anything? Ah, hey, Smith, I see a lot of zeros coming through. Okay, yeah, you're absolutely correct. So let me share something and I'll just give you a little picture here of what's going on. Now, as many of you know, I do like GeoGebra. So this is called GeoGebra. It's a free software um, that you can use to, to plot things, okay? So you can see here, I've put in the graph of the function sine x on x. You can see it sort of goes up to, well, it, it, it's, um, it's not really defined at x equals zero, but um, uh, we're interested in what is happening as x gets large and positive. And so what you can see here is that, well, it's kind of oscillating around the, the axis and it is indeed approaching zero, okay? So that kind of confirms the, the, the educated guesses we were making before. So what I, I always like to draw a picture or get some sort of uh, picture going when I'm uh, working on these kind of problems, okay? So let's have a look at this one here. Okay, so you should be able to see my document camera now. And, um, we're asked to use the pinching theorem, okay? So basically the pinching theorem um, kind of uses uh, inequalities. So let me see, show you how we work through it first. And we can discuss that together. So we want to evaluate the following limit. 
sine x all on x via the so-called pinching theorem. So they're actually telling us to use a specific particular method. Now, as many of you would know, I like using all sorts of methods, but here you're actually really told to, to use one particular method. Okay, so as I'm sure you know, the pinching theorem relies on inequalities, right? And two other functions. And really, you're just using a little bit of algebra to set up the right kind of inequalities, okay? So who can tell me in the chat what is an inequality for sine x? Can anyone tell me if I wanted to complete these with, with um, numbers, what, what can I actually um, say there? Okay, here comes the chat. Isabel, GIG, Cynthia, Tom, Joseph, Aditi, Smith, all correct. So we know, thank you very much, for all x, that this fundamental inequality holds, okay? Because sine x oscillates between positive one and negative one. Now, we actually want an inequality for that, not, not just this. So the next step is, how do we get this thing looking like this, okay? So can, can anyone suggest how we might get this in here, what can we do to, to, to our inequalities? What DT, yeah. Divide by X times by one on X, all the same thing. Thank you. So if I divide both sides by X, I get the following. Now, and that is starting to look like that now. Now, the only thing here is that when I divide or multiply by something and I have inequalities, I just wanna make sure that X is positive here, okay? So what I'm going to do is add a little note and saying, well, I'm only worried now when X is positive and that fits with X being large and positive, okay? If, if I didn't say that, then I couldn't really write this because I, I don't know if X is positive or negative. Yeah, tricky, huh? Okay, so what does the pinching theorem says? It says I can take the limit there, the limit there, and if these two things are equal, then they've got to be equal to the limit of the thing in the middle. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's take the limit of the left-hand side as X goes, goes to infinity. Who can tell me what is what is the value of this limit? Who can tell me? Zero, exactly. And the limit of one on X is also zero. Now, these are the same things. So basically you have the limit that is gonna to go to zero over here, the limit that goes to, is gonna to go to zero over here. And so if you take the limit in the middle, it's got to be squeezed, squeezed together, okay? Let me, let me do a close-up for, for dramatic effect. It's got to be squeezed, squeezed or pinched, pinched together, okay? So that's what you've got, okay? So these things are equal, super important. And we can say by the pinching theorem, we have the limit in here has to be zero. Okay. 
I know, Nabil, I'm sorry. I, I do like to have fun in these tutorials. Um, and so let's say, let's say I go back to my picture. So just give me a second here. Um, I'll, I'll put up GeoGebra again. Just give me a second. I'm just typing it all in. Okay, all right. So let me see if I can get this to, to work out. So I'll stop sharing that and I'll share my GeoGebra screen again. Okay, here we go. So you should be able to see that. And now if I put in one on X and negative one on X, and I'm only interested for X positive here, what's actually happening is the red line is trapped between the blue and the orange line. I know it's hard to see because the, the, the font's quite, the thickness is quite small, but that's what's happening. The blue graph and the orange graph are pinching that red curve, okay? And both the blue curve and the orange curve are headed towards zero, okay? So if you can understand that from a diagram perspective, and from an algebra perspective, then you are winning, okay? You are absolutely winning, yeah. Now that's an easy, an easy question, but let me, let me just go back and show you where it gets a bit harder. So let me share the Chrome tab again, okay? So this, this is a fundamental inequality right here, but sometimes you start these questions and you don't know what, to, what inequality to start with. That's the hardest part, okay? And, and the idea is get some basic inequality and then do something to it so you get this thing in the middle, okay? All right. All right okay, so that was um, 2A. Let's move on to 3B. Okay, so let me share the PDF again for those you might not have it in front of you. So I'll just share that PDF. Okay, so um, three, I think three part B, um, that's one of the recommended problems. It does say there's a video here, but that might just be for the first one. Okay, so let, let's have a look at this and unpack it. Now, one of the, the key strategies with limits is to use algebra in in a strategic way okay so let's let's have a look at this uh, i'll share my uh document camera back with you so much sharing going on here i've got like so many cameras okay so the, the question now is show the following limit. Okay, so this is a nice question because it kind of tells us what, what the answer uh, should be, okay? So I, I'm a little bit confused though, right? Because I look at this and I go, well, if I take the limit of the first thing, it's going to go to infinity. And if I take the limit of the second thing, it's going to be infinity. So I get infinity minus infinity zero. I get zero. Is, is that okay? Or, or does somebody have a better strategy? Hmm. Ah, okay. So Ning Xiao says, no, no, that's not okay. Joseph says, rationalize. Hmm. Square, Smith, Smith's on the case with squaring. These are all very good suggestions. Well, let's dig into that a little bit. What one way that you can, um, 
attempt this problem is, is to uh, simplify a little bit by multiplying, yeah, Jao, that, that's a good suggestion too, by multiplying by um, a factor of one. So let me show you what I mean. Now, you'll have seen this in if you've looked at, um, for example, complex numbers. You, you'll look at complex numbers in algebra and you do things like um, multiply by a factor of one. So let me let me show you what that means. And this is really just an algebraic trick. Okay, so I'm going to take my function and I'm going to multiply by this sort of conjugate. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of the same, except I've got a plus here and a minus here. And, and this right-hand side is just a factor of one. It's just multiplying the thing by one. Okay. Now, what you'll see is when we expand this, we'll actually get a function that is far more friendly, a super friendly function. So if I expand this, I'm going. this square root's going to disappear. This is going to become negative x squared. And the bottom part is not going to change. It's just going to become this thing. So you can see that's going to, going to um, uh, simplify with that. And then, then the question is, well, what might we do now, right? What might we do now? Well, if I'm going to take the, the limit of this thing, what I'm going to do is take is divide top and bottom by the highest power in the denominator. Okay, so if you look at this denominator, I can actually divide x into the denominator and the same with the with the top with the numerator. So the top part is just going to become one if I divide the top by x. The bottom part that's going to become one. If I divide in here, I'm going to get this, okay? So all I've done there is I've divided top and bottom by x, okay? All right, so now what happens? Now I can take the limit, right? That's going to become zero and disappear as x gets large. And so I've got one over one plus one. So this is just an algebraic trick to help you actually compute the limit. Now, there are other ways of doing this problem, and it's just up to you. So this is going to become zero, and everything else is going to become constant. So we're super happy. Yay. Okay. All right, Tom, thank you for your suggestion. Um, the epsilon delta definition of a limit is super tricky, and... Uh, Earlier this week, I spent pretty much an hour in the Choose Your Own Adventure um, tutorial discussing it. Um, so that, that's a good spot to start, um, but I might have time to quickly look at it um, later in this tutorial, okay? Yeah, Nabil, well, it's, it's the, 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 the nice thing here is you, you get you get, I mean, th this is like a simplification, right? And if you have a different sign here, then you get this, this cancellation out on top. Then you can, then you can uh, simplify down. So you will see this in um, complex numbers when you, when you do complex numbers in this course, okay? But this, this used to frustrate me when I was a student because if you didn't know this trick, you're like, oh, this has got to be zero. No, 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 no. Okay. All right.
So, um, uh, um, actually, Tom, I think we will do a question involving epsilons and m's. I think that's one of the recommended questions. So, so watch this space. Okay, so we might be able to do it um, anyway. All right, let me go back to the questions. Okay, you should be able to see that now. So um, the next question on the list is number four. Ah, oh, Tom, this is your question, buddy. Isn't that good? Okay. Now, if you don't, if you don't like it, of course, you can have a look at the earlier video that I did earlier this week. Um, it's publicly available. Okay. So let's have a look at the um, question. Okay. And hopefully, through this. You can you can see um, uh, uh, what it actually means. Okay, all right. So there's three parts to this question. Write down the formal definition for the following statement. Okay, and then evaluate that limit, which is pretty easy, and then verify from the formal definition that B is correct. Okay, so a couple of things before I start the question. Okay. If you're struggling with limits, like you're definitely not alone, okay? Um, it was only maybe 150 years ago that people actually worked out some sort of formal definition for a limit. Before that, people had very vague ideas of what a limit was and what it actually meant mathematically, okay? So if you're struggling, you're not alone, okay? So um, let's have a look first at the definition, and I'll explain that a little bit, and then we can uh, we can talk about the, the rest of the question. So this is question four, and you're supposed to say the form. You're supposed to write down the formal definition for a limit. Okay, so. So let me just use words here. So that's an infinity sign. Okay, so this statement here, here L is just some number, right? The statement means the following. Now, this is quite um, like long-winded, right? and I'll try to break it down, okay? It means for every positive value of epsilon, there is a number, m, which depends on epsilon, such that the distance between the function and its limits is less than epsilon whenever x is big enough. Now, again, people look at this and they go, Chris, what does that even mean, man? Like, like, like epsilons, really? Like, come on. Okay, let me try to explain it to you um, in a picture, okay? Now you can you can think about this as distance, the distance between the graph of the function and its limit. Okay? And you've got absolute values, right? So the distance between a function and its limit can be made less than any number, epsilon, as long as we go far enough along the x-axis to the right. Okay? So let me let me draw you a little picture. Now, I'm going to use the function that is actually in part B. So this is like 1 on 2x squared. Okay, so this is just a little example here. Okay, so let's make that the y-axis, the x-axis. 
Okay, so what is this graph approaching? Who can tell me in the chat? What is this graph approaching as we move towards positive infinity on the to the right? Yep, thank you, Brendan, Cynthia, Isabel, Smith, Aditi, you rule. Okay, so in this picture, for this function, the value of the limit, L, is just zero. Okay, ah, thank you, Chihan. Now, what is this? Okay, well, think of that as being zero. If I draw a little band, okay, so zero's here, that's the center of this strip, okay? This is epsilon and this is epsilon, okay? Now, this function enters that little strip and it never leaves it again, okay? That doesn't matter how thick or thin the strip is, eventually this function gets into the strip and it never leaves, okay? It never leaves, right? So what, what this basically says is the distance between this and this is always within these tolerances. And, you know, the, the M in this case might be there. As long as I'm over to the right, this graph is, is in this band and it's, it's sort of close, if you like, to the limit. That's pretty much all it says, okay? Yeah, the epsilon sausage. Is that, is that from Maple TA, Tom? Yes, ha, <laughs> love it. Okay, all right, so let's, um, so, so think of this as distance and, you know, X is large enough. Now, let's actually have a look at part B and we can, um, If f of x is 1 on 2x squared, then what is the limit? You guys have already told me. It's zero. And the last thing we want to do is we want to actually formally prove that um, this is that, that this is the case. Okay, so for me, the easiest way to do this is just managing the inequalities and having a strategy. All right, so I'm going to consider this with L equals zero and F of X is this, right? Yeah, and the first strategy is simplify this. Well, that disappears, so that's good. And then remove the absolute value signs, okay? So that disappears, and I can remove the absolute value signs because x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. And here, obviously, it can't be zero because you're dividing by, by zero. Okay, now we want to make this smaller then this epsilon, as long as the x in here is big. So let's try to manage that. Now it's just managing an inequality, okay? So this is true whenever, if I just move these things around, x squared is greater than one on two epsilon. Okay, so all I've done is I've taken that x squared up there and the epsilon down there. Okay, and now I can just take the, the square root. So i.e. that is when root 2 epsilon. Okay, so that's your m. x is greater than something. x is greater than something, and that something depends on epsilon. Okay, so that there is your M. So the, the little game goes like this, or well, the strategy. 
work out what L is, simplify, get rid of the absolute values, and then solve the inequality for X in terms of lambda. X should be bigger than something, right? Um, the game is you give me an epsilon, I'll give you an M. So if, you know, if epsilon was one here, what would M be? It would be one on square root of two. If you say, well, epsilon is 0 0.00001, well, M will be one on the square root of 0 0.00002, okay? That, that'll be a pretty big number. All right, thanks, Zach. Happy to help, okay? So um, I just think of these as distance. Distances, that's gotta be small as long as that, as long as X is big enough. All right. So Tom, so basically we've proven there's an X value. Yes, Tom, yes. Let me... Uh, Let me give you the big thumbs up. Tom, good job. Okay, Mario is pretty excited in the background too. So, yeah, you got it. You got it. And, and um, this is one of the hardest parts of this course. I reckon a lot of students graduate this course and they don't really have a deep understanding. Yeah, Nabil, let's -a go, indeed. Um, so hopefully that's helped. That's helped a bit, okay? See, if, if this is really small and this is really thin, you have to go a long way to get into the band. And But if it's, this is fat, then you don't have to go very far, okay? But you want this to work for every band, fat, thin, thick, whatever, okay? Okay. Um, is, there, is there any case where this won't work? Well, it, I guess it depends on the complexity of the function. Um, usually in this course, you get friendly functions that are reasonably um, easy to deal with. Um, and yeah, if, if um, you know, I, I, I can't, like, if, if you get these inequalities to work, then this is true, okay? That's, that's what it means. So, um, yeah, you, I, 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 I'm, Mathematically, I don't think you could say, well, this didn't exist and you somehow got this to work. It just, it just, just wouldn't, you know, it, it, mathematically it just wouldn't make sense. Okay, I hope that's helpful. All right, so let's go back to the next question. And I'll share this one. Okay, so what's next on the list? Uh, uh, Okay. Okay. All right. Let's try a slightly more difficult one. I'm, I'm looking at 6B here. Okay. Um, let me see where, um, how that worked. Oh, you know what? We could do, we could do 6A first. Um, let me just think about this for a second. I'm uh, just looking through my notes here. I think I've, I think I'll go to, what do we got? Just give me a second here, everyone. Yeah, I think I'll do part B, okay? I think I'll do part B. So, this is a not quite a friendly, um, oh, hey, Duke, do you prefer Duke? Let me know. Let's, let's start with B, okay? All right. So let's try that. So this is a bit more difficult and um, I'll show you how to navigate it when it's, a, when it's slightly, slightly more difficult. Okay, so for each of the following, find the limit as X gets large and positive and prove from the definition that your answer is correct. Okay. Okay, so 
Um, let me shift, switch back and we can go to my document camera. Okay, so six part B. Yeah, that's a six, that's a B. Okay. All right. So the function we have is defined in the following way. Now I put these, these little semicolons and equal sign, just like you were defining something in Maple. Okay. You don't have to do that though, that's fine. Who can tell me what will the limit of this function be as x tends to infinity? Hmm. Yeah, Ning Xiao, yeah. Joanna, Isabel, Si Hao, Ning Xiao. Good job. Let's, um, let's work that out. Well, you might be able to draw a picture or, um, you know, maybe we can go back to GeoGebra and do it. But the, the easiest way is this bottom part is going to dominate the top part because x squared is going to grow quicker than x. I think I'm back, everyone. Hello. Am I coming in loud and clear? Okay, sorry about that. Let me see if I can share again because um, that wasn't working very well. Okay, so let me share my Chrome tab again. All right. How is it looking now? Am I coming in? Am I, am I back? Yes. Oh, good. All right. Let's go. Okay. So um, the most important thing here, the, the denominator dominates the numerator. There's a fight going on between this. And this gets bigger as x gets large and positive. So this kind of smashes this, drags it down towards zero. Okay. So um, let me formally do that algebraically though. Okay. And then we'll, we'll work out the limit. So if I wanted to, oops, to do that, what do I do? I, I look at the highest power in the denominator and I can divide the top and the bottom by the highest power. Yeah, divide, yeah, Sartak, thank you. Divide top and bottom, right? So this mess, well, that's going to go into there. One on x, three on x squared. This is going to go into there, one and three on x squared. So what's going to happen as x gets large and positive, that goes to zero, that goes to zero, that goes to one, and that goes to zero. Okay? Now, you don't have to write all this out. I'm just trying to uh, show you where it comes from. So that's zero. Zero, one. Okay, so we already knew that. Hooray. Okay, so that's an algebraic approach. So what about the second part of this question where you're actually asked to formally prove it? And this is where it gets a bit, bit more difficult. Okay, so the second part is, so um, we have f of x is this, and l is just 0. So let's consider this more formally. What we want, and I'll just go back to this, this question from before, we're going to have this thing. So the limit of this function equals 0 means that the distance between the function and zero can be small whenever x is large. We want to find that m. Okay, we want to find that m for this particular function. Okay, so we're going to start with that, simplify it, and solve the inequality for x. That's how we'll find our m. Okay, now it's, it's a bit trickier in this case because the function isn't so friendly. Okay, so let's 
see what we can do. So L is zero, F of X is that. Okay, now obviously the zero is going to disappear. And what I would like to do is simplify the absolute value. So that's going to disappear. X squared plus three, that's always positive. So I can actually rewrite this as the following. Why? Because if I have the absolute value on A over B, that's just the absolute value of A divided by the absolute value of B. So you take the absolute value of that, and that's positive. So you can get rid of the absolute value signs. Okay? So I'm, I'm slowly, slowly simplifying that. Okay? Now, I'll bring in the epsilon in a minute, but I, I don't really want to work with this absolute value sign either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, I can do a couple of things, right? I can... Um, firstly say, when is this actually positive? Well, it's positive when X is greater than three. Okay, so I can actually say, well, as long as X is greater than three, this is equal to this. Okay, so, so whatever my M is, However far along the x-axis I go, I have to go at least three units. Okay, that's, that's the minimum here. Okay, so last thing, what I can do now is say, well, I don't like that x minus three and that x squared plus three. I'm going to simplify. And I'm going to say, well, x minus three is strictly less than x. And if I divide by x squared plus three, that's just that. Okay which gives me da, 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 that, that is a nice friendly function, okay? So make sure you understood how I did the algebra there. I went, let's get rid of this. I'm just going to assume that I'm, I'm going to go at least three units along the positive x-axis, right? That gets, the top goes to that. Then let's simplify this because x minus three is always less than x, and x squared plus 3, if you divide by it, that's going to be less than x squared. They simplify and you get that. Now let's introduce this epsilon. How can I solve this inequality? Bring the x up there, bring the epsilon down there. So bring the x up there, the epsilon down there. Okay? So the distance between a function and its limit is less than epsilon whenever x is bigger than 3 and x is bigger than 1 on epsilon. We've got to combine those in some way. Okay? Oh, Isabella, that's a good question. Let me stop. Does that mean you ignore x is less than 3? Yeah, why? Because we're going towards positive infinity. Okay? Yeah. So we don't care about negative values. Yeah, and Sartak, it's 1 on x squared plus 3 is less than 1 on x squared. Yeah, that's fine. So, so make sure you understand what's happening here, Sartak. It's a good question. Let me just type it in the chat. 1 on x squared plus 3 is less than 1 on x squared. Oh, hang on. Why? So let me just type that in the chat. This is what it is. So let me just one on x squared. That's that's it. Okay. So we have to make x bigger than this and bigger than this. There's a couple of ways of doing it, but probably the simplest way is to just add these two things together. Because x if x is bigger than that plus that, it's bigger than that. And it's bigger than that. So we can choose M to be 1 on epsilon plus 3. Okay, and that depends on epsilon. 
Okay. So we found an, an, uh, an M such that if X is bigger than this, bigger than that, bigger than that, that means this distance is small. Okay. Yeah, Zach, you are on the right track, buddy. You're on the right track there. Because we're heading off to in infinity, we don't really care. Um, uh, this M can be big or it can be small. Doesn't matter if it's big. That's fine. All right, Isabella, how do you know to do the second last line, though? Are, are we here or are we here? So this one? You say, you say, okay, this one. Yeah, how do you, well, I, I looked at this, right? And I and I went, you know. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a. I went. I'm freaking out. I don't like that. It's too complicated. Okay, that's a too, that, that that that's a complicated expression. How can I simplify it? Okay, how can I make it nice and friendly? Okay, so. Um, so what I did was I'm like, is there a way to get an inequality? that simplifies this into something super simple, okay? Okay, so, so, so the idea is to go from something difficult to something simple, okay? Now, um, the plus three means I, I need x to be bigger than that and x to be bigger than that. So the simplest way of ensuring that is just add these two things together and make x bigger than the sum, right? So that's that's what I've done. That's what I've done. Ah, Zach, good question. So Zach's asking, um, but you know, like, why don't I just choose the smallest m? You don't need it. You don't need it. Okay, unless you're asked to. Um, find the minimum, like the, the smallest m, but you'll get a much friendlier function than this. Okay. Yeah, Brendan, you're right. You're right. I mean, um, I mean, it, as yeah, you're right. So as epsilon gets small, this whole thing gets big. So yeah, you're right. But but you still need it there just for completeness. Well. Uh, a DT, this is, you know, one on x squared plus three is less than one on x squared. That's just in the in the chat. Okay. I just thought, how can I get rid of that? The plus three. Yeah. Okay, folks. Um, time's up. So, look, I hope you've had a good 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 session. It's been great. I hope you're enjoying week two. And, um, you know, just have a great day. Enjoy the evening or whatever you're doing today. And I'll see you next week. Uh, come and join me. And um, I do five tutorials per week. So if you want to come and say hi, um, there's the tutor-led tutorials and the choose your own adventures. So I've had a great time so far. So namaste. Enjoy the day. Sai Jen. And uh, I'll see you next week. Okay. And uh, I'll see you next week as well. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.